the aversion to the expected. There exists somewhere deep down in the DNA an aversion to the expected. For some of us cosmic rebels, it not only became a central feature of our approach to life, but our entire lives reflect it. It, in and of itself, can be a sort of prison of the mind, just as any ego attachment to resistance can be. Part of the architecture of this aversion is fear of no change. If things stay the same for too long, those with this affliction start getting anxious and eventually become depressed. We get suspicious of people with the opposite affliction, fear of change. Judging or accusing them of being over-controlling, desperately conventional slaves or control freaks. We see this in them because in our own way we are being and doing exactly the same thing, just on the other side of the fence. My conjecture is that for evolutionary reasons this feature was embedded in the DNA just as fear of change is embedded, but for different reasons that were exploited to create slaves. The fear of no changers acted as liberators for other FONCs, while the fear of change people kept to themselves and preferred the soothing regularity that constant routine affords. In society, we cater to this fear of no change feature by allowing vacations and other distractions from work routines. But to the true FONCers, these activities are looked upon as transparent manipulations designed to solve the impulse to bolt from work routines. In my own case, as a dyed-in-the-wool FONCer, I could never maintain a work routine unless I created it, and even then, I end up rebelling against that at some point. This is frowned upon by the master-slave culture inherent in capitalist industrial consumer societies. I bring all this up as a way of deconstructing my incessant wanderlust, and I hope it may shed some light for certain readers. The point is, there is no right or wrong end to this particular spectrum. But, just as in any dualistic panorama, the more extreme swings one way or the other seem to create pain and suffering. This was noticed by the great Zen masters who, as a result of this awareness, promoted the middle path. And I ultimately embrace this, even though my ego attachment to Wonderlust does act up sometimes. In light of quantum non-dualistic living, the fear of no change person must come to the awareness that everything is changing all the time, and that the illusion of no change is just that, an illusion. We get impatient and antsy as the monkey mind runs around its self-imposed cage, shaking the bars, kicking the food tray, and splashing the water trough. We too easily sometimes forget to look beyond the cage to observe the rest of the world inexorably transforming itself to realize our own hopes and dreams. The key is noticing the changes and hanging in with the time loops, apparent time drags, and all the other sensitivities we fear of no changers have about change. We must remember that one's entire life can change in an instant and that most of perceived change is happening underneath the surface perceptions. So, fellow FON seers, stay the course, keep the head and chin up, and sally forth in the ultimate certainty of a greater life ahead. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy RX. www.pureenergyrx.com.